Hey guys, welcome to uh, part five of the playground modeling project. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and look at the wall climb portion and the wall handle portion of the, uh, the playground pieces. So in the wall, uh, one of the main things to notice is uh, we're not going to have it kind of randomly placed. We're going to talk about how we can use points and holes versus circle and extrudes uh, to go ahead and make all of the inserts that we need. And then we're going to, uh, but before that, we're actually going to look at the wall handle, how we're going to go ahead and model this. And what we can do this is two different circles, is two different sketches, and two different extrusions. Um, I think I like the, uh, the revolve command on here. So in on shapes, starting with the, uh, the wall handle, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, mostly use the line tool to go ahead and do a right side view orientation. So I'm going to switch over to the right view, turn off the top and front, and then I'm going to do a sketch using the line tool. And the first portion is going to be the, the horizontal line, okay, the, the center half of this, to go ahead and uh, use a construction line to give it the full width. So in this case, we know that the full depth of this is two inches. And then turning off the construction line, we can go ahead and place roughly the rest of it. And I'm dimensioning parts that I know. Um, and then finishing that shape. And then dimensioning the last little bits. And to do that, grabbing the two lines that I care about and then dragging it down. So it's going to be giving me the uh, option to give the diameter radius, uh, or sorry, the diameter measurement, in this case, 1.75 and 3 inches. So 1.75 and 3 inches gives us a fully dimensioned uh, side view of the um, wall handle itself. So finishing that sketch using the revolve command, because it's uh, not a fully defined shape, we're using the surface function to go ahead and select the rough shape and then the rotational axis to go ahead and create the wall handle itself. Okay. So with that finished we're going to go ahead and close that document create a new document for the wall climb itself and in the case of the wall climb okay, we're going to start off with the rectangular shape so we know that it has a width of 72 inches has a height of 123 inches. So turning off the top and right side view to go ahead and start a sketch on the front view, we're going to start our shape. It's a rectangle, okay? Not even drawing it all the way out because I'm gonna go ahead and type in the 72 inches for width and then the 123 inches for height, okay? Click on the front view to go ahead and uh, zoom out hit escape a couple of times so I can take the dimensions off of the drawing itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw another rectangle to care, take care of the 36 inch width, 18 inches from the side with a height of 27 inches. So starting a new rectangle on the top line, roughly placing it, we can see that it's 36 inches, that it's 27 inches of depth, and then D for the dimension to go ahead and make it 17, 18 inches from the side. Okay. Now just to clean it up a little bit, make sure that I don't have junk information, I'm going to use the trim tool to go ahead and remove that top line. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the dimensioning tool, D, to go ahead and reposition that 27 inch dimension. So with the shape of the wall finished, we can go ahead and extrude it. In this case, we're extruding the shape. We've dim um, changed, uh, dimensioned it out three inches. We can finish the extrusion. And then we can go ahead and start working on placing all of those insert objects. Now here's where we have to look at two options. And one of them is because of a, a restriction, a, an inability of Onshape compared to some of the other CAD software that you might be using for this. So let's take a look at what we need to do for the holes. So first off is the insert holes, uh, sorry, the handle inserts are located randomly, so there's no dimension for their location. 
but the inserts themselves do need to measure 1.75 inch diameter and will be a cut extrude with a depth of 0.25 inches. Okay. So there are two ways that we can handle this. Drawing on the front surface, we can grab our circle tool and roughly place a 1.75 inch hole. Okay. And then we can go ahead and do a cut extrude. So we can finish that sketch. We can do the extrusion, selecting the shape, changing three dimensionally. So we know that we're removing a solid shape at distance of 0.25 inches. Okay. Now, the problem with that is we'd have to go back into that sketch. We would have to draw a lot of those circles. We would need to make sure that they get dimensioned, at least for the diameter, and then select all of them to go ahead and do that. And geometric constraints could help a little bit. Drawing them could help a little bit. But in most CAD software, uh, what we would do is we would actually go ahead and draw a bunch of points, similar to what we did with the monkey bars. So we know that when we look at this, there are about 30 different holes that they, uh, inserts that they've created. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Again, you can go a little bit above or below if you want to, uh, just roughly placing them. And with all of those points selected, in that sketch, we can select all of them, go back, uh, finishing the sketch, tell it that we need to create holes at all of those points, and it pretty much gives us the option to go ahead and do a similar blind hole, so a width diameter of 1.75 inches, a depth of 0.25. But what happens is, at least in on shape, when we do this, you'll notice that there's a little cone, like a little kind of point in there. And that's because usually when you drill, there's a, a point where the drill comes down at a, a point, an angle. And in the cut extrude method, we didn't have to deal with that. And in the hole tool in on shape, we do have to address that. Now, programs like Fusion 360, Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks, they have options to go ahead and create holes with flat bottoms, um, similar to kind of a counterbore technique. It's a way that you can actually machine things in the real world. But on shape doesn't seem to have that option. And because I'm encouraging you guys to look at on shape, if you can only do this online, um, I'm going to be okay if you have kind of that extra drilled out cone portion. Um, but if you're able to, or if you're willing to spend the time with an on shape, the more correct method would be to go ahead and have that flat bottom. So main reason here is uh, you have to recognize the differences between different pieces of software. So with that finished up, uh, we can go ahead and call this a completed drawing. But it's one where you need to think about, do you want to go for the more accurate method, uh, which will be a little bit more time consuming, or are you okay with using the point and hole technique? Um, so it's something that you'll have to choose, but uh, I'll let you make that decision before I see you in part six.